I'm Shantae and you're watching my show Anything Goes. Today's guest is the brilliant Jack Remington, aka one half of the viral X Factor duo Jack and Joel. Join us as we discuss his tone deaf childhood, the trick to winning X Factor and how a feud with Piers Morgan showed him his authentic self. Welcome to Anything Goes with me, Shantae Joseph. Today I am joined by one of my most favorite people on social media. Nobody does memes, <laughs> gifs, videos, TikTok quite <laughs> like this person. Today I am joined with, <laughs> stop laughing, Jack Remington, Woo! people. Hello friends. Hello. How are you doing? All things considered, I'm yeah. well. We need to talk about the music. Yeah. So how did you get into it? I was tone deaf growing up. My mum and dad were like, not that they were like, oh, it's so disappointing that you can't sing, but you know, it's always nice to be able to hold a tune. And then my dad yeah. was like, it's funny because when you were growing up, like you actually really weren't a very good singer. I don't know what it was. And then when I got to secondary school, I was the only boy in the choir. Okay. <laughs> so rather than like giving me a male, like a third, cause obviously there's like soprano, alto, and then a, like a boy's part, mm. rather than bothering with that, I think the like choir music teacher was quite lazy to be honest. <laughs> so I just got all the solos. And I think that's like the pivotal moment for me of like A, the singing thing yeah. and B, the like this. So it was great. So I think that was the first point where I was like, I was so lucky because I was allowed to just sing loads. Yeah. And then like built confidence obviously just doing that. But also it was mostly like year 11s and sixth formers that were in the musicals. But then there was like little shrieky old me in like year seven and eight. So I was like hanging out with people that were older yeah. because I was doing like, you know, we did Bugsy Malone, H actual high school musical, the musical. Really? At school. Yeah. Oh my days. Who are you? Ryan, obviously, okay. the gay one. But you know how he like, he changes his hat every scene in yeah. the film, but we didn't have a very big um, wardrobe budget. So they were like, you need to bring in as many of your own clothes as possible and we'll try and like fit it around. Yeah. But I was going through that tragic period when in year eight where all, well say all boys like, boys like me, of wearing cardigans. So every different scene, I was in a different cardigan. Oh my um, days. And that was in year eight. And then yeah, I guess just like always enjoyed singing. Never thought it would be something I'd do as a career. And then I ended up joining an acapella group when I got to uni. Yeah. We had some success with that. Um, we did a mashup of some Shakira songs and it ended up going viral. She saw it, shared it, so that helped. We did like a lot of kind of promo for it. And then we did a cover of All I Want For Christmas Is You by Mariah Carey. She saw that, shared that. And Joel, the guy that I sing with now, was in that group with me. Yeah. So we were just like, oh, maybe this is... So more than one do. boy this time. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then started singing as us two, and we started doing some YouTube videos whilst we were at uni together. And then we just got asked to audition for X Factor. We need to hear about what your experience mm -hmm. was like. Primarily, I'm definitely grateful and thankful that I did the show, 100%. Like, it's opened up a lot of doors. If nothing else, just for the fact that I've made so many good friends from it. But what I mentioned to you before was that I think I expected to go on the show with Joel and for us to be kind of nurtured. And we had Simon as our mentor, and so you think, yeah. oh, you know, mentor, like... Simon Cow. Talk, yeah, yeah, talk you through whatever. And really, I think all of these kind of shows want you to have done the legwork first, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I just wish I'd known this because yeah. we could have got more out of it. And what I mean by that is like our YouTube channel was us singing and harmonizing. Joel would make backing tracks because he's really good with like music tech and stuff. Or we'd do a cappella, so no backing tracks. Joel also plays guitar and piano. So all these things that we try to show off. And I think because every round of the show we did something different, like first audition, boot camp, blah, blah, blah. I think had we just stuck to one thing, it mm. would have worked a lot better because every round they were like, oh no, I wish you'd done more what you did the first time. We were like, well, we're trying to show you that we've yeah, got exactly this like, got diverse, yeah. And I think on a show like that, they want you to just go in and be like, right, I am the next Adele or I am the next, you know, boys, I mean, not boys and who was boys and nowadays, but you know, you know what I mean? Like they want you to just have this identity that works. And that's yeah. what worked the best for the people that did well on my season. I don't know what it's like with other judges, because Simon's so busy yeah. that we never really saw him. It was very much the music team being like, oh, Simon said this last night and relayed it to us. We didn't have yeah. that one-on-one -on -one thing of him being like, let me impart some words of wisdom. Do you think there is, because people always say like, they think it's fixed, they think it's fixed. Do you yeah. think producers know who is going to win at the end or do they? No, I mean, obviously because it's, they legally can't because yeah. they're dealing with like public votes when people have spent money. Right. So you can't actually fix it, but you can do little things that influence. So for instance, like a lot of people at home will, whatever Simon says, they're just like, oh, like I believe because he knows what he's talking about. What you don't see at home is that at the, after a performance, 
at when the person's finished and there's like five minutes before it, the audience kind of dies down and it pans to the judges on the live shows to get their mm. feedback. If Simon wants it to look like that person did really well, he'll stand up, turn to the audience in the, in the studio and go like this. And so for the acts that he wanted to do really well, it was uh. like this rapturous applause in the audience because obviously everyone kind of does what Simon says. Yeah. So at home you're like, oh, even if I thought that was a bit rubbish, like clearly I don't know what I'm talking about because yeah, exactly. I wasn't in the room, I'm not Simon, whatever. Yeah. People are led by that, I think, quite a lot. Yeah. We have to talk about dating and mm. what it is like dating as somebody who is quite hyper-visible. The weirdest thing for me with dating stuff is like, every so often I'll get people who follow me on Twitter or Instagram, particularly if I'm travelling, so if I'm not in London yeah. and I'm somewhere else and I come up on someone's like Tinder or whatever, I've had messages be like, I don't know who you think you are impersonating Jack Remington. And I'm literally like, I'm primarily flattered because I'm like, imagine they think that someone has the time to impersonate me when actually yeah. I'm like, nah, like I would also like to yeah. go on a date. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like it's allowed. <laughs> but then I'm like, I'm not going to sit there and beg for their approval to be like, no, 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 it's me. Look, yeah, here's, yeah. here's me with the newspaper from today. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like, so I think there's that sometimes, which more than anything, I just find it's funny, but also like, cute because I'm like yeah, imagine, yeah. <laughs> imagine you thinking that I'm like <laughs> a personality enough that someone would want to impersonate yeah the, the main thing is I would like to go into a scenario where someone this sounds so like as if I think I'm Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> but bear with of like someone who just who doesn't know who you are so you can go in yeah. and be like hi I'm this and like yeah. you get to tell people exactly what you want to tell them about you mm. rather than then have them having this idea so like sometimes people being like oh my god I love your Twitter so much and I'm like that's great and I genuinely appreciate that yeah but like dating wise you therefore, I don't know how much you know of me. I'm quite open on social media, so I feel yeah. like I've already, and that's my fault. I'm obviously not blaming anyone else yeah, for that, yeah, but yeah. I feel like I've kind of then, I don't know how much of my heart I've opened up that you already know about before. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. then them asking questions or me wanting to have conversation and them knowing what the answers are because, they, exactly. do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also because you're quite like, you know, positive and energetic, and I'm, mm. I'm sure people are always expecting you to be like that as well. Like, yeah. do you feel like you have time to switch off? Or if you're quiet, people are like, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong? Yeah, I am relatively energetic, and yeah. I am quite a positive person, so I don't feel too much pressure to keep that up because mm. it is actually me. I'm lucky enough that I just feel like, if I want to post something daft on my Instagram story, yeah. I will. If I want to say a ridiculous tweet that in five minutes I'm going to delete because <laughs> I processed the thought and then removed it from the Twitter sphere, <laughs> I'm going to do that, do you yeah, know what exactly. I mean? So I, I do feel like, I'm relatively representative yeah, of yeah. what I put out on social media. You do use your platform to like be political though, which yeah. I, I really love. And um, what has the reaction been to that? I now probably couldn't go into a position where you have to be completely apolitical. Yeah. Because it's like, okay, well he can be apolitical now, but we all know what his actual thought. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, In a way that yeah. like Phil and Holly and those kind of people like you have to be very careful about their own personal yeah. views. I wouldn't feel kind of correct in sharing just like airy fairy kind of stuff. Like I want yeah, to exactly. actually get my opinion out there. And, and also the whole political thing, like a lot of the time it isn't political. When I was like disseminating a lot of Black Lives Matter stuff, obviously we know that's, you know, like that's not a political side, that's just life. I don't worry about it too much because I just think I'm being completely genuine yeah, with what exactly. I want to share and what my opinions are and, you know, I do think people should use whatever platform, however big or small it is, yeah. as best they can. Yeah. And being apolitical is still being political. Like, 100%. not choosing a side is choosing a side. And having the luxury of doing that. Yeah. Exactly. It's choosing your side of the oppressor as mm -hmm. opposed to the oppressed. You know, someone's got to do it. Right. Do you know what I mean? And there's so, no point in having a platform if you're not ever going to address these major issues. Because totally. then you're just complicit. Do you know totally. what I mean? Totally. And, and I do have this worry. The biggest thing for me was, like, earlier this year, I had a big spat with Piers Morgan. Oh, my God. We've got to talk about that. About the, like, <laughs> the violent stuff. And um, it ended up him being like, I'm going to get lawyers involved, yeah. blah, blah, blocking me. Um, and that was the point where I was like, shit, okay, that for instance maybe means like there's a slight ITV bridge that's burned because he's working, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. But then I'm just like, I can't live my life just not yeah. wanting to speak out on stuff. Like, I feel like the internet like democratises like content and stuff like that. Mm. If you're entertaining, you're engaging, people will flock to you. Right. And then it, brands will have no choice but to work with you. Like, totally. like in, in the interest of like profit, like you mm. can't continuously blacklist people. No. I also feel like we're living in such a politicised world. Like I felt very apolitical growing up and that's partly probably from privilege. Partly though also I think we weren't anywhere near as polarised mm. politically, internationally as well. 
10 years ago compared to what we are now. Now it's almost harder to be like, I'm not having an opinion and yeah, I'm remaining. Exactly. So then you're like, well, then that's an active political place you're putting yourself exactly. in. Exactly. Whereas before it was just like, don't really know, don't really care. Exactly. Say la vie, whatever, but it's not. No. Yeah, it's not. It's actually been really fun chatting to you, but it's been very serious. And yeah. so I feel like we need to sing it out. We need to do some karaoke. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not ready, but come on, yeah. Cardi B, this is for you, honey. We're going to be recreating WAP to some wonderful ballads. My voice is terrible, Jack's voice is great, but together it's going to sound mediocre. And that's all we can ask for at this moment. So let's go. In this house, there's some horse in this house. Bring a bucket and a mop. Got me swallowing me, drip down the side of me. Quick, jump out for you, let it get inside of me. I tell her where to put it, never tell her where it's about to be. I run down on him for a half a running me. Hey, 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 hey. Look, I need a hard hit, I need a deep stroke, I need a head yeah. injury, I need a weed stroke, I need a goddess neck, need a king curve with a hook in it. Hope you lean over. over. Got some money, that's where I'm headed. Who's the A1? Just like his credit. No, no, no. Oh, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, Gobble me, swallow me, drip down the side of me. Quick jump out for you, let it get inside of me. Tell them where to put it, never tell them where I'm about to be. Now! Whoa! Get your boots! Boots! And get your coat! Coat! Wet ass pussy! Pussy, e pussy! E e e I let him taste it, now he diabetic. Oh, I don't wanna spit, I wanna go. I wanna gag, I wanna choke. I want you to touch that little dangy thing that swing in the back of my throat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You fucking with some wet ass pussy. Bring a bucket and a mop. Put this wet ass pussy. Give me everything you got for this wet ass pussy. Now from the top, make it drop for this wet ass pussy. Right now. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, you are just a ball of positivity and energy and, and warmth. And warmth. <laughs> and you are literally and you are literally the sun. But that's why we love you. So Thanks thank you so much me. and just you know sharing and just enjoying this moment. Like, subscribe, share. Thank you. Shante and Jack in the Campbell Studios are bidding you farewell today. Day. That was sick in it, I made that up. That was really good.